Today I'm gonna share with you my favorite luxury makeup products that I have tried so far in 2021. This is like my mid-year roundup. Coming a little late, but well worth it because there are so many products in here that have really blown me away. If your makeup routine is your favorite ritual, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm here every week sharing my beauty habit with you. Let's talk the best of the best in luxury makeup so far this year. I'm wearing everything on my face today and you'll see me apply it as I talk about it. So the first step obviously is primer and this primer really surprised me. It is the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. It is silky, it is smoothing, it has just the right amount of grip to help your foundation really last and stay. And I've tried this with both the Gucci foundation and with other foundations in my collection. And one thing that I really like about this is that I have found that it really helps foundation kind of like settle into the skin rather than just sitting on top of it. I do have some foundations that occasionally don't really want to meld into the skin right away. This priming serum actually really helps with that. It helps kind of like pull it into your skin and get it to really like melt in. I also love that it has a little bit of illumination to it on the skin. I was not expecting to like this. I thought it was just going to be crap, but I was pleasantly surprised. And in all of 2021 so far, this is my favorite primer that I have tried. And that's even including that Victoria Beckham one that I just like adore. So way to go Gucci. Foundation was so hard for me to decide, you guys. I have tried more foundations this year than any year. <laughs> and oh my gosh, I really just was so torn. I went back and forth between a couple but in the end I decided to go with the one that is really the most skin like because that's what I like in a foundation I like for my skin to look like skin and the winner was the Gucci natural finish fluid foundation which they have named this so appropriately this really is one of the most like natural skin finish foundations you will ever try it is fantastic it looks like skin I wear a 120 n it's a really great match for me this foundation is so lovely I've been like to go very light with my foundation lately. I've kind of changed my foundation routine up a little bit. So I start pretty light. I use a round top foundation brush. I buff it in. And then the great thing about this foundation too is you can build it up. So I'll build it up in areas where maybe I'm having a little bit more redness. It doesn't accentuate texture. During the summer, I have pretty combination skin. It's pretty dry around the outside and my under eyes. I can sometimes be so dry that I have like flaking and texture going on. This does not accentuate that. It applies really nice nicely over that as well as applying really nicely in my t-zone where I have more normal skin in the summer. I sometimes get a little bit oily across the nose. I have congestion texture from like just clogged pores and things like that. So this really does double duty and looks really nice on the outside of my face as well as wearing really nicely on the t-zone. All in all I just was really not expecting for Gucci to like really bring it with the complexion products but they truly did and I think they have like legitimately good makeup. Next up is concealer. Now this concealer is not new in 2021. It's just new to me. It is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Concealer. This concealer is so good. And right now this and the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer are actually the only two concealers that I can use. I actually applied this today in a very odd spot, but it's because I missed a couple weeks of my retinol eye cream. And now that I've reintroduced it, I do have a lot of peeling, especially in the inner corner of my eye. So I have to be really careful with what I put on my under eye, lest I end up really accentuating the fact that my skin is peeling there. This and the NARS are actually the only two concealers that I own that I can get away with right now because of that peeling. And I think that's just a testament to how good they are. They're very creamy. They're really good if you have very dry under eyes like I do. They spread out really well. They give me a nice brightening under eye coverage. It's not too heavy. It doesn't crease up on me. And the great thing about this is you can just use your finger to tap on it throughout the day to kind of refresh it if you do find yourself getting like a little bit of a crease. Next up is a product I just started using in the last six weeks and I'm actually angry that I love it because it is insanely expensive. It is the Sheer Press Powder from La Mer. It is $100, which is nuts. I am wearing the shade Translucent. I love this powder so much. And the reason why is like I was saying earlier, this year more than any other year, my skin has gone 
so combination this summer. I don't know if it's like the heat waves going on or what, but my skin so dry around the outside and the under eyes. I mean, to the point of flaking at times. But then here in the T-zone, I have congestion. I have increased oil production. I'm getting blackheads. I literally have to powder right around here at least two to three times a day. So, I mean, my skin is like true combination right now. It has never really been this way. This is the first time I'm experiencing this in my life. And I just did not have a powder that I felt was really working for both areas. I felt like when I was like having to powder with my other powders throughout the day in the T-zone, it was just too much. It was almost like it was getting like kind of cakey. This powder doesn't. I use this to set my under eyes. I use this to set my T-zone. I use this to touch up my T-zone throughout the day when I get a little bit oily. And I use it to set the outer perimeter of my face where I'm dry. It never ends up looking dry on me. It mats my skin down without looking dry, without looking cakey, flaky. I'm just obsessed with this. Also, this is the best translucent powder shade for me that I have ever had. If you are super fair, you're gonna love this shade. <laughs> I wish it was not $100, I really do. But I am realizing that while this is something that I'm loving throughout the summer, there are other powders that I'm gonna be able to use during the winter. So maybe I can get, you know, like a couple years out of this. It truly just has been a lifesaver for me with the way that my skin is acting this summer. So I feel like this is the best find I've had. I don't even know what made me go out and buy it. I just was like, I have to find a solution to this powder deal. Like I felt like I was using one powder for the center of my face and one for the outside of my face. <laughs> That's a little bit much. I don't wanna walk around with two compacts all day. Being able to consolidate into one has been fantastic. And thank you, thank you, La Mer. Let's talk blush. My favorite blush that I have tried so far this year is a brand new one. And it's actually gotten a lot of like mixed reviews. I think it's kind of one of those like hit or miss products. Luckily for me, it is a hit. It is the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush from her Seamless Skin line. My favorite shade is the one I'm wearing today, Pink Poetry. I did get five shades and I like them all. I'll list them down in the description box, the ones that I got. But this for me is the best. It's such a natural flush. It has gotten mixed reviews, I think because this is not the easiest blush to blend out. It's a cream product and you have to really, really squeeze the tube to get anything out. Like it's really difficult to get even a little bit of product out of this, but you only need the tiniest, tiniest bit. Now, the first time I tried this, I didn't like it. So I went back and watched Lisa's launch video again to see how she applied and how she recommended to apply. And once I saw that, I really figured it out and I started to love this blush because the thing is, this is like the most natural flushed skin look I've ever had. Every time I wear this blush in this exact color, I find myself just like staring at my cheeks every time I walk by a mirror, especially if I do like a very minimal makeup day where I just put this on the cheeks and very little everywhere else on my face. I just find myself like, oh my gosh, it looks like I just got a little bit of sun or oh my gosh, it looks like I'm just blushing. Now I like to blend this out with my fingers and then I might finish off with like my foundation brush. Like I said, it takes a little bit of work to warm it up and to get it blended out, but the end result is so beautiful. It's so natural. I've just never owned a blush that looks this natural of a flush. Like there are times if I'm doing like a no makeup makeup day where I forget I'm wearing blush. I'm like, oh, I just look so rosy today. And then I'm like, oh wait, I am wearing blush. So I love this. I feel like she knocked it out of the park. I know again, it's like a hit or miss product for people, but if you don't mind like, you know, the little bit of learning curve to figure out how to get it to best blend into your skin, it is one of the most beautiful natural flushes you will ever experience in your life. Next up, bronzer. This was a really hard one. I was torn between my beloved Gucci bronzer, but I was like, did I first try that in 2020? I think so. <laughs> I did end up going back and forth before settling on the newly reformulated Guerlain Terracotta Sunkiss Natural Bronzer. I have the shade Light Cool. I actually own two shades of this. I have Light Cool and Light Warm. Light Cool is right here and this is Light Warm. Very similar. You can tell that this one is, as it says, cooler, but it's still a bronzer. So there's still warmth to it. You're gonna get some warmth from it. I would highly recommend that unless you have very like golden undertones, if you're as fair as me, unless you have very golden undertones, you're gonna wanna go with the cool because the light warm is super duper golden. Light cool has just the right amount of warmth for me. I feel like it looks like such a natural warm up to the face. It blends beautifully. It's got luminescent shimmers in it, but it doesn't look shimmery, if that makes sense. It just makes 
makes it look soft, illuminating. It looks really soft on the skin, warms you up. Looks like a very natural outer perimeter of the face warmth. You know that deal where you get like a little bit of sun on the top of your forehead. Looks very natural and that's again what I've been really gravitating towards. I feel like my makeup just keeps getting more and more like about making my skin look like skin. It's so odd to put stuff on your skin to make it look like skin but I feel like that's how trends are also going so I don't think it's fully just like me feeling that way. I think it's like kind of a progression that's happening right now. For highlight I'm so excited. This is an actual new product. Relatively new. This is from Dior. This is their Forever Couture Luminizer. I have two shades of this actually. I have Pink Glow and then I also have the shade Nude Glow. I really like them both but the Pink Glow wins the award. I have always been talking about that backstage luminizer quad from Dior and I love the like light pink luminizer shade in it. It is so beautiful. It looks so lovely on the skin. It's one shade out of four though and this I feel like is so similar to that but I have just the shade itself. The one shade that I use the most. It looks so beautiful, so illuminating. It gives that nice glow. You can put a little bit extra on if you really want it to like glow, glow, glow. And then in the middle of the face, I go like very light with it to just give me a tiny bit of illuminating and also blurring because obviously when you're bouncing light, that kind of blurs that area. It doesn't accentuate texture. It lasts really well. I'm just so excited that they came out with these and I really was like very excited because I was like, there's not really any highlighters that I've been super excited about in the year 2021. So having something new that I'm just loving that's very similar to that Dior Backstage Quad, but just a little bit softer, I love that. And the packaging of this is so beautiful. It's this nice like soft ochre shade. And then you've got this squishy cushion pleather kind of going on. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love the packaging. For lipsticks, this is another area where it was like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. And I went back and forth on should I go off of like new formula I've tried or new color? And at the end of the day, like there are so many good lipstick formulas. What really draws me in is shade. That's like what I really care about. What I'm always like, like that's why I'm always buying new lipsticks is to have new shades, not to have new formulas. So I decided to go with my favorite shade that I've tried so far in 2021. And I decided on this one from Tom Ford. It is the shade Empire. This is the perfect like pinky coral red. It's just so bright. It livens up the skin and makes everything look so lovely, but it's casual enough that it's not like you're wearing like a straight up true red lip. Like I feel like you can wear this day to day and it doesn't look like too fancy, but it also looks fancy when I need it to look fancy. There's just this hint of freshness to it that I just love. I love this color. I think it's so fantastic. I find myself like wanting to wear it all the time. I almost completely forgot eyeshadow. So let's go back to eyes. So on my eyes today, I'm wearing this quad from Tom Ford. This is in the shade Nude Dip. Again, eyeshadows for me, like as long as the formula is good, I'm all about the colors of it. And this color story is perfect. Now, if you've never tried Tom Ford eyeshadows before, they're very similar to like Chanel or Dior. It's not gonna be like straight up like, wow, look at the pigment of this. It's so like true to life. It's gonna be more buildable, soft. Like that's more of it. It's also a very creamy formula but this color story is so perfect. The first time I put this on I was like oh my gosh I could not stop staring at my eye makeup like the whole day. <laughs> it's just this wonderful like cool taupey like smoky color story that's natural enough to wear it day to day or to wear in a dressy situation and it looks so blended effortlessly like it's so easy to blend these shades out. They look just perfectly blended, perfectly beautiful. I just cannot get over this quad. I got this a few weeks ago and I was like, wow, like I've completely now forgotten about all the palettes I got earlier in the year. This always happens to me. I'm such a sucker for like a quad or a duo or a one and done shadow. I don't know if I'm ever going to learn my lesson and fully stop buying eyeshadow palettes, but of all the palettes that I have bought this year, I do have to say that I feel like this is the one that I'm going to reach for continuously because it's just an easy, fantastic look. And again, that color story is just it's timeless and it's so, so flattering. Last but not least, let's talk
talk about lip gloss. So my favorite lip gloss I've tried this year is the Westman Atelier Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm. At this point, I own one, two, three, four, five shades in this sucker. This is a really good lip gloss. It is the perfect mix between a balm and a gloss. It's weighty, it stays on the lips, it doesn't dry them out, it doesn't run away, it doesn't get like gunky and nasty. My favorite shade by far is Chow Chow or Choo Choo. I never really know French names. This is just the perfect like milky pink to go over all of like my favorite pinky nude lipsticks. By the way, if you haven't seen it, I did an entire video on my favorite pinky nude lipsticks. I actually did luxury and drugstore for that one. I'll be sure to link it up above and down below. Check that out. This shade goes perfect on all of those. Then there's the shade Ma Pousse. Again, don't know if that's properly said. And this is like more of a bright pinky shade. Very pretty. These are all quite sheer, but I find them to look really well over whichever color story you're wearing as far as lipstick goes. There's Pipsqueak, which is like a brick red. I would probably put that over a red, but because this is such a fresh red that I have on my lips and such a unique shade, none of these would really be something I would put. Maybe, maybe Mupas, Mapus. I'm never gonna get the name right. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have Nunu, which is like a very like baby pink kind of shade. I am gonna try this one shade, the Mapus shade, because it does look like it could work. I just love these glosses. They feel so nice by themselves. I like wearing them over lip liner, wearing them over lipsticks. They really like stay, they do not move around, which I really appreciate that weight on there, but without feeling too like sticky, too heavy. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite product that you've tried so far in 2021. I am gonna do a regrets video, my most regretted makeup of 2021 so far. So be sure to be on the lookout for that one as well. I hope to see you in my next video. And until then, you take care of yourself. Bye.